This is a paper on a new simple technique to bootstrap various lattice zero knowledge proofs to cure or obscure NIZKs. My name is Shu and I'm from ICE. So this is our result. Uh, we provide a simple semi-generic method to construct cure or obscure lattice space zero knowledge proofs. The new technical tool that we develop is an extractable linear homomorphic commitment, which I might just uh, call extractable lin HC. What I mean by this semi-generic is that it doesn't work for any sigma protocol or public co-interactive protocol, but it only works for this limited class that has a linear response. But this is very natural and it's satisfied by a lot of lattice space uh, public coin interactive protocols. So starting from this, we can apply our linear extractable linear HC and then obtain a QROM secure NIZK, which is also an online extractable proof of knowledge. Let me first provide the background and motivation. So in this talk, we'll be considering non-interact zero knowledge, uh, NIZKs. In an NIZK, uh, there's gonna be a statement X that's in this language L, and any prover that holds a valid witness W for the statement X shall be able to construct a proof pi. And this proof pi will convince to the verifier that this prover knew this witness W. There's gonna be two security properties that we require. So one property is zero knowledge, and this states that for a cheating, cheating verifier, given this proof pi, uh, this proof pi leaks no information about this witness W. And the only thing that the cheating verifier gets to know is that this statement X was actually in the language or not. We also want to consider a secure notion for cheating provers. And we'll be talking about proof of knowledge in this work, which is uh, strictly stronger than soundness. So what this tells us is that there's going to be an extractor such that uh, for any cheating prover that outputs a valid proof pi, it's able to extract a valid witness W that satisfies this type of relation. And this implicitly implies soundness because uh, if this proof pi uh, can be used to extract a witness W, then it means that this statement X was actually in this language. In this work, we'll be considering NIZKs in the random oracle model. And in the ROM, uh, all the users in the system, the prover or the verifier, they're going to have access to the random oracle. And NIZKs in the random oracle model is heuristic to some extent because it can only be secure, it can be only proven secure in the random oracle model. But this is typically fine in practice because this results in the most efficient and practical schemes. So there's two types of ROM that we can think of. So if we have a quantum adversary, then this quantum adversary can evaluate real world hash functions over qubits in the real world in the real world. So we want this QROM to model this capability as well. So while in the classical ROM, it only made classical inputs and received classical outputs, in the quantum ROM, we'll allow this adversary to query inputs and superpositions and receive outputs and superposition as well. And this creates a lot of difficulties in the proof of QROMs. So there are a lot of uh, proof techniques in the classical ROM that we take for granted which seems hard to import to the QROM setting. The first two are observing the adversary's input query and also knowing what this corresponding output was with respect to this input query. And why is this difficult? So the reason is, is that since these are in superposition, if we measure it, it will collapse to a single state. And if these input and output queries were entangled with the quantum state of this adversary, then measurement might disturb the adversary state. So the adversary might actually notice that it was being measured in the QROM. And this doesn't show up in the classical setting because in the classical setting, we just write proofs saying that uh, the adversary outputs and it outputs X to the random oracle. We sample random Y. So we know these X values and Y values definitely. But in the quantum setting, this is a bit difficult. Also, another issue is adaptively programming the random oracle. And this is because the 
quantum adversary may query all the inputs in superposition to the random oracle. So at that point, it seems as though the random oracle is going to be defined on all outputs, meaning that there's not going to be any notion of adaptively programming the random oracle while the game trends, uh, transcends. And uh, these three uh, seemingly very difficult problem, uh, nowadays, well, the past two or three years, there's been a lot of work regarding this. So we now know uh, many ways to overcome these seemingly difficult uh, problems. However, uh, they do not come for free as in the classical ROM setting, and it requires a lot of complications. And sometimes it's, there are still um, really difficult things that we have to overcome. So that was the issue about whether we're talking about classical or quantum ROM, but there's actually difficulty just in using quantum adversaries, regardless of this ROM being classical or quantum. And one uh, representative example is rewinding type of arguments. This is a type of proof where we uh, fix a randomness R for this adversary and we run the reduction while the reduction algorithm um, programs the random oracle up to this point, well, it proves the random oracle. And what we do is that we will uh, rewind the adversary to some point, let's say to this uh, query x prime. And we will reprogram the random oracle on this uh, x prime. And from that point on, rerun the adversary again on the same random as r. So rewind the adversary and we rerun it. And the issue, the, the issue of this in the quantum setting is that there's no notion of fixed randomness. So uh, this general technique might not really work in the quantum setting. And now let me explain a bit more about lattice space QRAM NIZKs and how we construct them. All the NIZKs that we'll be mentioning this work will start from a Sigma protocol or in more general, a public coin interactive proof system. If we focus on sigma protocols, it's very standard to define two notions, honest verifier zero knowledge and special soundness. Where special soundness is very interesting because um, it states that given two, two valid transcripts with the same A, first flow, uh, there is an efficient way to extract a witness W. Let me explain two famous ways to convert a sigma protocol into an IZK. The first one is the fiat schmier transform. And in the classical setting, this is excellent because it works for any type of sigma protocol and the proof overhead is minimal. Uh, one relatively small downside is that the proof of knowledge here requires rewinding, so it does incur uh, a reduction loss. There's also the Unner transform, which was originally created for this quantum setting, which I'll explain later, but uh, it, I, it works for the classical setting as well. And it works again for any sigma protocol, but we have to restrict the challenge set to be small. And due to this, uh, we require a lot of power repetitions, and we also have to include a lot of garbage terms to make the own transform work, where this C is the size of this challenge set. So the, there's going to be a, a lot of blow, to, blow up here. Uh, the good thing is that the proof of knowledge is straight line extractable. So it results in a tighter proof. It doesn't require rewinding. But uh, still, the general rule of thumb, I guess, in the classical setting is that we want to work with a fiat schmidt transform because it's uh, it's just really good. And in this transform, uh, the overhead is quite big when the challenge set, uh, the original sigma protocol, can um, have a challenge set that's as large as exponential. However, if, it's, if it only is capable of using small challenge set to begin with, then sometimes the inner transform is competitive too. The situation in the quantum setting is a bit different. So the fiat schmier transform no longer works for any sigma protocol, but only works for a class called collapsing sigma protocols. Also, the proof of knowledge, it works but uh, through rewinding, but there's going to be a lot of uh, small subtleties that we have to take care of and uh, technical issues that we have to take care of. And it will lose a bit more in the reduction law, reduction compared to the classical setting. 
compared to this, the under transform, it's much better because it's basically the same argument that we would make in the classical setting. So it's just, uh, it's very similar and easy. So the obvious downside now is that not all existing sigma protocol are known to be collapsing. So we have to show that it's collapsing. And this is not, this is sometimes very tricky, I guess. So the good thing about UNRU is that if we can show in the classical setting, then it also will work fine in the quantum setting too. So it's very easy to analyze. Uh, for general two N plus one round PCIPs, uh, the situation for the phase human transform is the same, but the under transform, it's a bit different. It doesn't work for any 2N plus one, but it only works for five RAND protocols with a specific type of challenge sets. And here, this might be able to be expanded to multi rounds, but uh, we don't know of this yet. Let me talk a bit more about the, the secure ROM secure fish human transform. So this was shown by these two groups in 2019. And they start with a collapsing sigma protocol. And they first argue using a rewinding argument that this can be transformed into a sigma protocol with a quantum proof of knowledge, where basically this is a sigma protocol with a proof of knowledge where the adversary is also a quantum uh, adversary. And in the second step, they argued using a new reprogram technique to show that the Theoshima transform applies and it construct the Kiram security and IZK. So this is a two step that they took. And the thing is, uh, it's really not clear if all these existing schemes are collapsing. So this part is the difficult part now. And also this reprogramming step, uh, most of the times it will incur reduction loss, uh, a bit more than a classical setting. So let me explain a bit about the recent uh, lattice space PCIPs in the classical ROM setting. So I only talk about the Fischmere with abort types of sigma protocol, so I won't be talking about the Stern type protocol in this slide. So the most basic one is the original Libyshevsky 09-012 paper, which provided a relaxed proof for SIS and LW relations. And interestingly, the two pa papers show that this is a collapsing sigma protocol as well with a slight increase in the parameters. So we know how to apply the Fiat-Shamir transform securely in the Curon setting for these very basic sigma protocols. For the more recent ones, like opening to commitments, range proofs, one of many proofs, we don't know if these are uh, collapsing sigma protocols. So we don't know how to apply the Fiat-Shamir transform, but we do know how to apply the under transform because it's still a sigma protocol. The caveat is that these schemes uh, can use exponentially large challenge set, but we have to restrict them to be polynomial size or even smaller than that to make under transform work. So there's going to be a large blow up here compared to the classical one. And finally, there are these new uh, five round schemes or even larger than five round schemes where we don't know how to apply the Fiat Shamir or under transform at all. I would know that this uh, modified unit transform for the five round protocol might work, but uh, there are a lot of details that we have to check to really know for sure if it works or not. So this is the current situation. And this brings us to our main question of this talk, which is, can we get the best of the Fischmer and unit transform and even a bit more? So the Fischmer transform, it requires no overhead and it works for exponentially large challenge set size. Undru, it works for any sigma protocol, and it has a tight reduction, which is a straight line extractable uh, proof of knowledge. However, uh, there are these schemes that are not covered by Fiat-Shamir or Undru, so it will be interesting to see if there are other transforms that covers um, protocols that lie outside of these two schemes. And this brings us to our result. So our result is a new transform uh, that provides a partial answer to the previous question. It's a semi-generic approach that sits somewhere between Fiat-Shamir and UNRU. 
So these are the properties, and the first one is that it works for many lattice space PCIPs, or in general, any PCIP with a linear response, where this notion will become clear in the later slides. The overhead of our transform is larger than the Fischer-Meyer transform, while it's much smaller than the Unner transform, when the challenge set size is exponentially large, which is the case for many of these lattice space PCIP protocols. The reduction loss is smaller than Fischer-Meyer, since it's a straight line extractable proof, like Unruh. And our security proof is very simple, and it's almost very classical, so uh, it requires minimal no knowledge on quantum computation. And finally, it works for PCIPs where Fischer-Meyer and Unruh are not yet known to work. The new technical tool that we develop in this work is called Extractable Linear Homomorphic Commitment. And with using this extractable in HC, we can start from any uh, sigma protocol with a linear response. And this is a very natural uh, sigma protocol and it's satisfied by many sigma protocols. Here, uh, if we start from this primitive, we can combine with an extractable linear HC and bypass this rewinding argument to directly get a, a sigma protocol with quantum proof of knowledge. And then we can use prior reprogram techniques to get a QRAM secure NIZK. Or uh, this is a simplified extractable linear HC, but if we uh, start with a more structured extractable linear HC, which is not that different, uh, we can directly get to this QRAM secure NIZK without even having this reprogram technique. So this will provide us the most tightest and its simplest um, transfer if we want an NIZK. If we only want a quantum proof of knowledge, then we can just use this transform. We will explain our idea in a bottom-up approach. So we'll start from this very base example, which is a sigma protocol for the SIS or LW relation by Lubashevsky. So this will be a scheme that's here in the classical realm. Here we have two ma one matrix A and a vector U, and the witness is going to be a short vector E satisfying this relation. The prover will sample a short vector r from some distribution, let's say a Gaussian distribution, and create this vector w, and sends it to the verifier. The verifier samples a, a short um, element from this rq and sends it to the prover. The prover sets z at c times e plus r, and uh, it will do this rejection sampling step, which is not really important for this talk to maintain the shortness of Z without revealing the witness E. It will then send this Z and the verifier will just check that Z is short and this uh, equation holds. So basically this is Schnorr's protocol, but uh, using lattice language. The main question here is that to eventually show proof of knowledge of the Fischer-Meyer NIZK, we want to extract a witness from a single transcript. But in order to invoke the special soundness of this sigma protocol, we need two transcripts. And the question is how to obtain these two valid transcripts without rewinding. So this is the first step. We add a linear homomorphic commitment. So when the prover computes this W, first flow W, we will also commit to the witness E and to the randomness R. And we'll send this commitment, come E and come R, to the verifier. The verifier will sample challenge C and sends it to the prover as before. And now the prover will set this Z, which is, when you look at it here, it's a linearly homomorphic operation over this E and R, the committed messages. And it will also do the same for this committed randomness now. So it will create a delta Z randomness from the delta E and delta R. And uh, the prover will send this delta Z to the verifier. What does the verifier do? So it does the normal checks, and it also checks that this uh, commitment uh, com E and com R was constructed correctly using this Z, the Z and the opening delta Z. So if this equation holds, then the verifier will accept. And this is implicitly checking that this commitment, two commitments, were created honestly. And this is still a standard sigma protocol because uh, if this commitment is, let's say, hiding, 
then we have honest verifier zero knowledge and special soundness. We just can ignore these purple elements and we just invoke it using the base sigma protocol. So right now it doesn't provide us anything new. So we want to, as a second step, add extractability. So assume this commitment scheme was public keyed. And uh, in the original public key, it's just gonna be a random bit string, but in the proof, we'll swap this into a new public key star with a trapdoor tau. And this trapdoor tau will allow us to extract from any honestly generated commitment. So given a commitment of this form, then extract com will extract this uh, element x. So now what we want to show using this added extractability is that only given this first uh, valid transcript, we want to extract a witness e. An incorrect naive argument will just be to say, well, run this uh, extractor on this commitment e which is given to the verifier in the first round here. But this is obviously wrong because there is no guarantee that this commitment E, cum E, is valid. The verifier or the simulator or the reduction algorithm only knows that this commitment, this part is correct. But since the commitment, we already know that this opens to Z and delta Z, uh, it seems like there's no place to use this trapdoor right now. So as a third step, uh, we will now show how to argue extraction correctly. So the simple observation is that this commitment E and commitment R is prepared before the challenge C. So for simplicity, we'll assume that this challenge set is small right now, even though eventually we want this to be uh, exponentially large. For now, we'll just think that this is small. And we'll further assume that there's, we are guaranteed that there is another valid transcript that V will accept eventually, the verifier will accept. Then with these two assumptions, what this extractor will do, the Sigma protocol extractor, what it will do is that it will just run through all the challenge and create commitment for all this challenge I and try to extract, the, extract from this commitment. So by assumption, since this, since this verifier will accept on this challenge C prime, it means that for C prime, this commitment Z created for the C prime, it will be valid. Therefore, this is guaranteed to be a valid commitment. So the trapdoor will extract this del uh, Z prime as promised. So if we're given this first flow, I mean, first transcript, then we can run this uh, extractor, which will run through all the challenge set. Then it will find Z prime at some point in polynomial steps, and we'll be able to extract uh, these two uh, valid transcripts. The remaining question is how to make this uh, argument work for exponentially large challenge set. And here, uh, the point was that uh, we needed this to be polynomial large to run through all this uh, space. And an uh, easy modification is that we're just going to make this probabilistic. So we're going to have an upper bound large n, and we're just going to keep on running this until it succeeds. So we'll sample a random challenge and just keep on running this extraction. And the question is, does this work and how do we set this large n? So this is a simple arg statistical argument. So let's assume an adversary has non-negligible advantage epsilon right now in completing the sigma protocol. Then using a very standard counting argument, there has to be at least 2D times epsilon challenges for which A would have been able to answer. Therefore, we can set this large n to be roughly lambda, well, lambda secure parameter over epsilon. And after sampling this many random challenges, then with overwhelming probability, it will hit another valid commitment. And this analysis works 
regardless of the adversary being quantum or not, because it works the moment the adversary is able to produce a valid transcript, then we can just invoke this reduction, regardless of A being quantum or classical. So this is how we make it work. So summary so far is that uh, using this simple extractable lin AC, then we can get a sigma protocol with a quantum proof of knowledge. Extending this to the QRAM secure NIZK setting is very easy, which is covered by this uh, blue line. Uh, we don't have time to explain it in detail in this talk, but it does follow very naturally from previous results. Some details worth mentioning is that uh, in our Fiesta transform, we require a slightly stronger flavor extractable lin AC because the sigma protocol is only computational on its verifier zero knowledge. Uh, also, the analysis extends easily to multi-round, and since the commitment key was a random binary string, we can just use the random oracle to output this public key in the real protocol, rather than relying on a CRS, a common reference string. Also, when we look carefully, our NIZK is actually dual mode because depending on the public key we use, it will be statistically sound or statistically zero knowledge. Finally, let me just uh, give a brief overview on how to construct such an extractable lin HC. So, in fact, the dual reg of PK is already what we want, an extractable lin HC. So the commitment key in the real world will be a, a random binary string. So this will be structured into a matrix A and B. So this will correspond to a dual reg of PKE public key that has no secret keys. And to commit, we're just going to encrypt using this uh, random public key. And here, the randomness here for this extractable lin HC will just be the randomness for this encryption scheme here, S. And linearly, uh, linear homomorphism follows naturally because dual reg of PKE is linearly homomorphic. So you can just uh, get the C times E plus R term here. And in the extraction mode, we'll just set this public key into an actual dual reg of public key with a secret key. And using that secret key, we can always decrypt this and obtain this uh, C times E plus R term. So this is a very basic way of constructing an extractable lin HC. And in the paper, we also uh, provide a second method that uses n like public key encryption scheme to get better efficiency. As a concrete application, we benchmark using this BLS19 protocol, which provides an exact sound 5 round PCIP protocol. Uh, first of all, the Fischer-Mir transform, it's not obvious whether it applies or not because we don't know if this is a collapsing sigma protocol or a five round protocol. And also the UNR transform doesn't work because it's not a sigma protocol, but this modified UNR transform might apply. So we will benchmark using this modified UNR transform, assuming that it works. So uh, the normal classical ROM NIZK, it's going to be 812 kilobytes, the proof size. If we apply the modified under transform, it's going to result in a 45 megabyte proof, which is roughly more than 100 times larger than the classical one. And if we apply our extractable lin HC protocol, it's only going to be at most 2.6 larger, which is 2071 kilobytes. So compared to UNRU, it does provide a smaller uh, proof size. So this was our talk and this is a summary and open problems. Thank you for listening.